designate a food area before uh, before it's too late to use that. Um, okay. well, well, Tom's going to be here, I think, starting tomorrow. Alright guys, 11.16 a.m. Uh, February 28th, and uh, we're heading to the lodge in a little bit. Had about five, six through hikers here, two more, but they went straight to the lodge. Uh, one thing I noticed, a lot of people are skipping the approach uh, from the sign in. A lot of them are starting at Springer, so um, yeah, we're going to do the approach. We're going to head walk over to the lodge, do the stairs right now. Julie, any, any words of uh, how do you feel? Uh, I feel kind of wet, but once we get moving, I'll warm up a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah. we're both pretty pretty excited about to. I'm enter. really excited. I want to see if it's as hard as people say. <laughs> it, it shouldn't be too bad. Let's okay. see. All right, guys, check out these beautiful Georgia views that we're getting. There's a trail, seeing some gorgeous mountains over there. And that's what we have on Gut Hook coming up. Um, just one downhill, then up, past that shelter at the bottom, and then we're making our way to Springer. And we got about three miles to go. All right, guys, we made it to the plaque. And a little drizzle, but not much. Look at that. Feels good to be back up here. And then there's the first white blaze. And look at that view. Gorgeous, the sky's just opened up and get to see beautiful beautiful mountains all the way from this viewpoint okay. all right there was a couple hikers behind us we haven't seen them since but there's the first white blaze and there's the Georgia to main plaque and Julie how does it feel to be on the first uh, seeing the first white blaze and I don't know it hasn't hit me yet I don't know when it's gonna but it hasn't hit me yet I don't know why yeah I think once you actually, we did the approach, but tomorrow we actually start, start. We're just going to take it easy. What time is it? Four or something? Let's see. It's almost five o'clock. Yeah, so we took our time, what, 11.45 till five to do 8.8 .8 miles with breaks and stuff. But we're here and uh, there it, just, it is. I, I feel like, I don't know. It feels so weird seeing it. Yeah. I don't even know how to explain yeah, well, but especially it feels in Georgia. Like I'm not really here. Like I'm just seeing. It. Yeah, like a movie almost, right? Yeah, it feels weird. But it's gorgeous. I think once I start going on the trail, the actual trail, it'll feel. Yeah, it kind of hits you, and you realize, yeah. oh, okay, I'm making my way north, <laughs> making our way north to Maine. All right, see you guys next time. Alright guys, 1.20pm, getting a little view from top of Sassafras over here, 
and uh, we are about uh, a little over 11 miles in raining all day on us but feels incredible to be uh, back on the AT and whew, these climbs are not easy at all uh. All right, guys, between Gooch Gap and Horse Gap. And uh, Julie, how does that steep climb, how did it treat you? Uh, I'm always slow on the climbs, but I'm fast on the downhill, so. Yeah, she's faster uh, than me on downhill. That was a pretty steep climb. Um, but we got some downhill coming up here. Uh, and the uh, rain's kind of stopping by, stopping a little bit, so taking a little break here. I want to see the view. All right, got Julie here, hiking away, and I've been behind <laughs> behind her 90% of the day. Um, but we're about a mile and a half from Woody Gap. I just put on my puffy and uh, my REI fleece hat, feeling a lot warmer. Uh, rain on us like all day. Julie, how much rain did would you say we had so far? Like 75% uh, of the time. Yeah, 75% is good. So, a lot, a lot of rain, but that's the AT for you. You kind of know what you sign up for. Um, but, feeling feeling pretty good. Stopping at Woody Gap in a little bit here. And, uh, just following the white blazes today, northbound. Making our way to Katahdin. One mile at a time. One foot in front of the other. Hiking along one of the best trails, by far my favorite trail in the country, but I'll check in with you guys later. Alright, here's what happens when you and your hiking partner have the same poles. Julie, check your poles. Oh my god, these are tall, aren't they? <laughs> these are yours. So I caught mine, my straps off. and. Oh, so that's how we tell? Yeah. Well, since when did you not have straps? Now, I get rid of them right away. I don't use them. Oh, I didn't even notice. And I got duct tape. Well, the straps are good if you want to hang your... They're good know. to put your balance on them. Like, put your weight on them well, around your wrist. Well, you can wrist. hang your pack through this if on the duplex. I didn't know that. Yeah, I watched <laughs> a YouTube video on it. I might try it. Yeah, uh, that's but. pretty cool. I didn't know that. I get rid of mine. If you keep these, you can hang your bag from them. Because my I pitched my tent with the checking poles. You can hang uh, your bag from these. Yeah, yeah. Uh, use a stick or something. And, and if, it if you put your wrist on them, you can use them to like put your weight on it. I don't do that though. I yeah. just kind of put them underneath. Yeah. I got so. blood blister from doing that. It's gone. But okay. It used to be nice. there. Um, but it was also cold, wet, and uh, I think I was wearing gloves that were too small for me. So maybe that's why. Yeah. They were just rubbing on the skin and whatnot. But yeah, I got my poles back. <laughs> And we got more water. Second water source right before Woody Gap. Picture of me. In front of it. All right, we got some beautiful views out of Woody Gap. Chattahoochee National Forest.